Hello friends, welcome to next tutorial in ChatGPT RPS series. In this blog, we'll demo the process of updating mouse columns across numerous files with a significant amount of data. Below in video description, you'll find links to GitHub source code and YouTube playlist. So let's browse to our GitHub RPA repository. Inside this repo, if you're looking for other Python automation code, you'll find links to a lot of different examples which perform variety of different tasks. In today's blog, our main emphasis will be on conducting extensive calculation on large-scale datasets. So let's get started. In last video, I have shown you how to perform mass calculations on significant amount of data using Python Pandas data frame. Now, if you are finding this video for the first time, I suggest you please watch the previous video before you continue with today's blog. In today's blog, we'll resume same mass update data transformation what we have done in this last video. However, instead of using pandas, this time we are going to use PyArrow to perform this calculation. And in next block, we'll do the same data transformation using Rust Polar's data frame library. So if you recall, we used pandas data frame apply function and we called a lambda function which calculates, which does the calculation row by row. Now this time we are going to use the PyArrow Pi approach. So let's go head out to their documentation. You'll find a dedicated chapter on PyArrow in the pandas data frame documentation. So as you can see, pandas can utilize PyArrow to extend functionality starting version 2.0. The major advantage of using PyArrow is, is the most extensive data types compared to NumPy. So before you get started, make sure that you have installed the minimum supported version of PyArrow. I assume you are using pandas 2.0. First change you will notice in pandas 2.0 that you can define a series that means your vector column and you can define a data type as pi arrow and that's exactly what we are going to do so if you recall our data frame we had certain amount fields like amount and rate and time so what we are going to do we are going to convert those columns because those are series columns those are vector columns we are going to cast those and we are going to change the data type to make use of pi arrow before we change our code, so let's compile our object-oriented programming interface and make sure the method get in touch method works fine. All right, so now let's go back and uh, first check our data frame. So if you do the df.info or df.dtypes, you guys, you can see most of the data type or my existing fields are float64. So I'm going to convert those to pi arrow. Now to do that, it's a very simple interface. So all you need to do, you just need to um, make sure, first of all, you need to make sure that you have the Pi Arrow library installed, pip install Pi Arrow if you haven't already, haven't already done that. Let's import Pi Arrow SPA and uh, do the DF info one more time. All right, so now uh, df.dtypes will give you the same results. So now we are going to take one column at a time. Uh, let me just say DF and we are going to select the column say amount and here DF amount and I'm going to change the as type so as type is a function you can call it in a series on a vector column and inside that as type if you read the signature of this function it takes a value so that means here i'm saying i'm going to convert this to float 32 of type pi arrow so now let me run this code and after in this code i'm going to check the df dot dt times one more time let me comment all this so as you can see that it is already changed so now amount has been changed so similarly i'm going to change the other um, other uh, integer or floating type values in my in my data frame to pi arrow. All right, so let's go to the time compound. Sorry. As you can see, most of my uh, calculation fields have already been changed to make use of data type pi arrow, except one rate. Rate is an object, so I have to externally cast it to change it to pi arrow data type. All right, uh, but you might be under the impression that changing the data types to pi arrow will make this faster but no not in this case so as you can see because i'm again calling a, a python function which does a row by row calculation so if i go and execute this function again you will be surprised that this will not be this will not get any better so just changing the data type to pi arrow if you compare the results to the previous values what we have been doing in pandas it didn't get any better 
So in our case, as we want to do the mass calculations better and we want to do row by row calculation, we have to make use of compute functions. So again, if you go to the, if you uh, search for the pi arrow compute function documentation, it will take you to the there. So if you go through this chapter, you will see there are some standard compute functions like filter, aggregate, uh, or equal, those kind of expressions are already there. If not, so please first make sure that you make use of the standard compute functions. If not, then you have to make use of user defined functions. And I will show you both the scenarios. Uh, but one thing to, you know, uh, one disclaimer that user defined functions currently, this API is experimental. So it may not work as you expected. Now to do the user defined function, there are some things you have to do. We have to follow some steps and we will cover those in extensive details later as we write the code. All right. So um, enough with the uh, documentation. Let's get started with the code. So let's head out to our VS code and we are going to import the, all the pi arrow libraries. So import pi arrow as a PO and we are going to import CSV from pi arrow and we are going to another import another uh, module say compute. Now compute is where all the standard compute functions are defined. Now let's go read the CSV file into a pi arrow table. So as you can see syntax is very similar to the pandas data frame library here. But here you are creating a data frame which is a PA table. Now, if you want to access a column in that data frame PA table, simply just like what you used to do in pandas, simply pass the name of that particular column. So A equals to D of PA table, and we are going to say interest. Similarly, you can access another column, uh, say for example, total. And if you want to compare those two, simply call a function on PC, that uh, module. So PC dot equal, and there, these are the standard compute functions what I was talking about. So if you run this, it will tell you if those two columns are equal or not. Very simply, if you want to do the group by, similarly, just call that DFPA table dot group by and pass that particular field which you want to group by. And if you want to aggregate and if you want to see the total or counts and those things you can do. These are the standard compute functions. Similarly, there's another compute functions you need to be aware of, filter. Filter works very similarly, just pass the field name and you want to, all the you know filtering condition and you can use also the binary operators say AND and OR. All right, so these are very simple examples, very standard compute functions here. But as you can see, these standard compute functions may not be enough. So in our examples, as you can see, we had uh, a lot of um, complex algorithms or you know, standard compute functions. So again, you can define your own user defined function, but again, just a disclaimer that this API is experimental. So now to do that, let's review the documentation one more time. As you can see, um, to define a user defined function, you need to first define a function name docs function documentation input types and output types and once you have those ready you have to register that function so let's call this function name as a get interest calc polar anything you want to give it and pass some documentation a string summary or whatever documentation this helps you whenever this is registers uh, so this helps to maintain all the documentation here all right so function name function docs input types so input types is again these are the fields uh, originally what we defined in our functions. So deposit, amount, compound, return of interest and time. Similarly, output type, right now I'm going to keep this as a blank. All right, so now let's define that particular function. Uh, so define get interest calc polar and inside that we are going to pass a context object followed by all the values which we want to uh, do the calculations on. So deposit, amount, compound, rate of interest and time. Now, just to make the point one more time, this is again not a preferred approach because this is again a function. So calling a function, this is a Python function. So whenever you are working with the pi arrow uh, compute, and if you want to call a function, you are going outside that pi arrow framework and you are calling a Python function. So it may slow down, um, slow down uh, the, the code execution. At the same time, since this user design function is registered within the pi arrow framework, then it will perform better. All right, so let's define, let's start with a defining a table, pa.table, and then we are going to create the table from the arrays. So in our original data set, as we said, there are there was one text field, a string field was deposit, rest of the fields for the float value, like amount and compound and rest uh, time and return of it, etc. So once you create the table in PA framework, you have to pass the schema as well. So as you can see, deposit is the only field which is a string, rest of the fields are of the type float. All right. So now let's define a blank array of columns uh, and I'm going to define my column. This is the new column we are going to create, new interest column. Now simply we'll create a for loop 
which goes through this table all the columns in that table so table dot column names and we are going to take one column at a time and we are going to process it right so now let's go check the this column name and if column name exists in the set of my columns which is new interest column then we are going to create a new array all right so here simply we are going to uh, first convert that arrow to pi vendors and we are going to use the apply function and we will call that user defined function we have um, uh, we have just created so the key here is using you know once you have that user defined function then you have to apply that function to the column what you want to convert where you want to do the mass calculations again it may seem a little harder but once again once you see the flow you have created a method which does all the calculation row by row similarly in pi arrow framework you created that user divide function because standard compute functions were not enough so you created that user defined function you registered that user defined function and then now you are going to use that user defined function to do the mass update here all right so i think uh, one last step is remaining once you have the result of this particular user defined function we are going to capture the inside the updated table here all right and now once and uh, now this function is ready all you need to do you need to register this user defined function to the pi arrow um, okay so pc dot register scalar function okay so pc compute module you are registering this particular user defined function to the pc compute module all right so as you can see it takes uh, when you register it it takes the function and it also takes the some parameters okay so we are going to say function name function docs input types and output types that's how you register a standard user defined function to pi arrow as a pi arrow compute function all right so now my function is ready now all we need to do simply we are going to you know um, call this user defined function on our data sets so it's a very similar step like what we did in past we are going to read our sample data into a ps pa table that means pi arrow table here and uh, let's import the this data set as a uh, into uh, data set module okay so ds dot data set and i'm going to pass that particular table um, as a parameter to the data set function all right so now our data set is ready all we need to do on this data set i am going to call that function now here is a very simple very uh, intuitive syntax here you have to use the there is a method called underscore call so let me just uh, first define the arguments as well to data set dot to table and here on the column where you want to which you want to compute all you need to do you have to call this method called underscore call and inside that underscore call you call that particular user defined function what you have just created what you have registered into pi arrow so one more thing i believe we also need to pass the functional arguments what we just created okay so in underscore call to uh, underscore call method accepts two parameters one is the name of the user defined function and other is the functional arguments what we created so I believe that's it and that's all it's going to take to perform that mass calculation using pi arrow. As you can see this pi arrow it may you some people may find it a little harder. Uh, so that's the reason we are going to use the um, rust polars data framework because rust polars also uses apache arrow framework and it's, it performs a lot better is intuitive and it's a lot faster. Thank you for watching this video and next video we will cover the rust polars data frame. Thank you.